Hello my friends. Today we're going to do our first our break-in oil change on our Aurora silent diesel generator. Um, just real quick we kept the box and we taped it up real nice and they're kind of making a dust cover out of the box. So uh, we've run the generator for uh, eight hours and three minutes and we used as a load we used a couple of portable uh, electric heaters they're like 1500 watts each they want like a half a load while you're breaking it in so I used two of these um, I figured it was a nice load to use while breaking it in because it's a nice steady uh, 1500 watts it doesn't cycle on or off at least if you have it on high um, so I used two of those uh, there was, uh, 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 the first hour and a half, I was able to use a piece of styrofoam that came in the packing and I clicked the, uh, the throttle, uh, lever, uh, clicked it off its 3600 RPM setting and I was able to wedge the styrofoam in there and bring the RPMs down to like 15, 16, 1700 RPMs for the first hour and like 35 minutes of break-in. Um, because uh, it's kind of recommended in their manuals and their literature but also it just makes common sense that uh, you know if you start it off slower in a break-in period is better than starting off at the 3600 rpm so after that hour and a half or so at the lower rpm with the styrofoam block in in the um, wedged in the throttle lever uh, we brought it up to the 3600 rpm for the remainder of the break-in period although there were certain times that uh, i just cocked it back with my fingers unclicked the throttle lever and held the rpms low like 13 14 1500 for like a minute and then brought it back up to the 3600 you know just to like give some flexibility to the engine during the break-in period so we've run it eight hours and three minutes on the natural uh, diesel engine oil. Now we're going to do our first oil change and we're going to clean the filter and we're going to do all the recommended services in the manual and we're going to replace with a synthetic diesel, diesel oil is special, with a synthetic diesel oil uh, because the theory is during the break-in you want wear and tear on the engine so you use the natural oil gives you wear and tear and then after the break-in you switch to the de uh, the synthetic oil which stops like 99 percent of the wear and tear on the engine it also gives you a little flexibility and it withstands the heat a little better it gives you a little flexibility on the oil change times because synthetic lasts longer so um all right so there we go so now we're going to open this up we're going to open up the front cover it appears that they have given us this is the oil change spigot and because this is the silent diesel generator and it's totally encased in a nice soundproof cabinet there's like a little tray under uh, this oil spigot that I'll get you close up on in a minute that the oil drains into and then it's gonna slop out the bottom so I have propped the silent diesel generator up on some paint cans be careful the weight is not centered but I got it pretty stable on a couple of because I want to slip my oil change pan underneath there and we'll get you close-ups on everything and get this video moving right along the oil filter and the oil uh, drain So we have our eight hour break in, eight hour, three minutes. It's up to operating temperature. We're going to pull the plug and drop the oil. She's a little tight, so here's a little trick for you. you. Take your second wrench and stick it in the first one, and that'll give you like a breaker bar, little leverage, and it's 17 millimeter. Uh, let's see what kind of mess this makes, or if they designed it so it's nice and neat. All right, so it's dripping into that pan, and then it's dripping into my tray underneath. Um, it looks pretty neat up to this point. Let's loosen up the oil filler 
to let the vacuum and let this stuff pour out, break the vacuum, because it's guggling. There we go. Okie dokie. All right, now we're going to, uh, everything's like uh, 10 millimeter or 17 millimeter, so we're going to use our 10 millimeter ratchet and uh, open that oil filter. I know Ron was nice enough to make a bunch of videos on YouTube, Ron from Aurora, but he's all with the one-handed technique on his video, so I figured I'd put a couple of videos out there actually using two hands and uh, giving you like the consumer point of view. This is the first time I'm changing the oil on this thing, and uh, this way you all people can get a good idea if... Uh, you know, you're up to this. It's real important to change the oil on these generators. Uh, during Sandy, um, now this looks like also, when I pull it out, any oil is going to end up in that tray they put down there. But during Sandy up here on Long Island, a lot of people were just running and running these generators for the whole week, 14 days, never thinking about changing the oil. And you put a lot of wear and tear and you can actually damage your engine. Damage the engine beyond repair. Okay, so we're just gonna gently. I don't know how they want us to. Uh, if we twist this baby out, I know there's an O ring in there that we gotta uh, get it out. Let's see how she wants to come. There we go. Pop the oil in. Yes, and it looks like that oil also, which I see a lot of metal shavings in the oil, which could be expected during a break-in. I see a lot of sparklies in there. Let's see if I get you guys a close-up on that. As we pull the oil filter out and uh, a lot of metal shavings just to, as expected in a break-in but that's good they all ended up in the uh, in the screen here and you're gonna see a lot of generators this size on the market they're not gonna have any filter uh, they're not in the oil. They're not gonna have any oil pump or anything. They're just what they call splash oiled where the crankshaft actually Splashes the oil all up around the inside of the engine But this guy's actually got an oil pump in it and because of that They're able to put this filter screen in there and trap all these metal shavings in any lesser generator would have been circled around and Caused even more wear and tear in the engine. So we're gonna clean this out with like some uh a carburetor cleaner spray or some WD-40 or something or even some hot soap and water would work and uh, we're gonna clean it out real good and we're gonna reinstall it but we're just gonna let this oil a couple of minutes drain out I actually have the engine on a little bit of a uh, of a tilt this this way to help uh, get all the oil up to the front and drain it out. But we're gonna let it sit and let all of this, as much of this old oil we can get out because we're replacing it with a synthetic. Now, of course, any small engine or any engine with an oil pump is going to pwn an engine that doesn't have an oil pump. This is a quality unit, just like to say it. A lot of those metal shavings you saw are from the manufacturing process, and there's a percentage of them that's from wear and tear from the break-in. So it's all good that it was stuck in that filter and not circulating around the engine during the break-in period. So now we got it all out. We got all this natural break-in oil out, and we're going to replace it with a synthetic diesel oil. 
as far as the waste oil personally I keep like my oil drip trays nice and clean and stuff and I pour it all into a bigger can I got a five gallon can that I keep nice and clean and like my truck and my wife's car and this kind of oil I'll pour it into the big five gallon can and eventually it gets poured into the home heating oil tank uh, with a funnel uh, with a screen in it and I usually try to time it so be right before I get a delivery from the delivery truck the heating oil I'll pour my waste oil in there it's usually three or four gallons and then the guy comes that delivers the the way the heating oil and that stirs it up and mixes it up in the tank and eventually my waste oil gets burned in my home heating system I've been doing it for like 15 years so don't tell me that uh, you know it's not good for my furnace uh, the service guy has never said anything like, oh, your injectors are dirty or anything like that, you know, and he doesn't know what I do. Well, most of them don't know. Sometimes I'll brag what I do after they say everything is fine, and then they're all, like, shaking their head and stuff. But uh, 15 years I've been burning my waste oil, probably about six or seven gallons a year through my home heating system. Not a problem. So we're going to let this sit a couple of more minutes and drip out, and then we're going to uh, clean that filter. We're going to put the synthetic oil in it, and then we're going to do the rest of the recommended service for the break-in period. And then uh, this guy's ready to go, you know, in service. An Aurora Silent Diesel in service. So now we're going to clean our oil screen, and we're going to clean our uh, plug. We got uh, a rag. See my video entitled Rags. Uh, if uh, you want to make yourself some nice regs and we're going to use a solvent this is like a carburetor cleaner spray and uh, we're going to use that it's just a solvent and uh, you could actually like use like diesel oil or uh, or uh, a, 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 not gasoline because that's a little dangerous but uh, or even soap and water and we're going to clean off the plug and I'm more and more impressed with this little machine the more I play with it like this oil plug for instance they got a uh, bronze uh, gasket on it uh, instead of a cheap paper gasket or a rubber o-ring that's really nice it's reusable over and over a million times I'm um, getting more and more impressed with this little machine the more I play with it and I'm just like wiping and spraying and wiping and spraying these little metal shavings are nothing to get alarmed about it's normal part of any engine break-in usually trapped inside of a paper filter that you wouldn't see And perhaps you could see some of the little metal shavings. Now I'm taking this rag that we just used uh, and it's full of solvent from cleaning that oil screen and I'm going to use it to clean up the uh, drip tray from changing the oil. I think is a good idea before I throw it out, I'll uh, use it to sop up all this oil. Now if you watch Aurora Ron's video, he stresses the importance of getting this oil strainer in the correct way or you're not going to have any oil pressure. And that goes as far as like seating it all the way in and aligning up the screw hole and everything will be fine. So uh, you know, if you're really worried about that, check out his video. But if you just put it in exactly the way it was when you took it out, you'll be fine. So we've sprayed it down with solvent and we went with the uh, little plastic uh, brush or to uh, old toothbrush to clean out the metal uh, shavings. And the last thing we're going to do is hit it with a little compressed air. And, uh, you know, of course, spend a couple of minutes on that. It's just a YouTube example. 
and uh, and then put it back in, making sure it's seated and in the original position. You'll be fine. Now, if you remember, when we had this delivered, it came with an extra air cleaner, an extra oil strainer, and an extra fuel filter uh, assembly. So, uh, I mean, uh, like I said, the more and more I play with this thing, the more and more impressed I am. So, uh, we're just going to take a couple of drops of oil and put it around the O-ring on this oil strainer and then pop it back into position, wipe off the extra. Now that the oil plug is in and the oil strainer is back in, I'm going to spray that area with a little brake cleaner. It's a solvent in a spray can, in a spray can, just to get that extra oil residue off that whole area because I like my machines clean and I don't want like dust and grime to build up in that area. So I'm just going to spray it and wipe it one last time after everything's sealed up. But actually, maybe I'll wait until I fill it up with oil before I do that because I'll probably spill a couple of drops doing that. So that'll be the last wipe down. <laughs> Now, because this is like a major, uh, you know, the eight-hour uh, servicing, uh, here we go. We got a couple of drops of oil inside the cap here. We're just going to put it around this O-ring. Because it's the eight-hour service, I actually have the back cover off of this baby, which is just like six 10-millimeter uh, bolts. And it, and it actually looks like the access to fill it up is easier on the back side of the engine because there's two fillers. There's one in the front and one in the back. So uh, we're gonna go to the back to fill this uh, fill this baby up with uh, with oil, just because it looks a lot easier from the back. Okay, so I pop that in. It's seated. The screw hole is lined up. I'm gonna put this little bolt back in there. Uh, and uh, make sure it's not cross threaded. So you're gonna go fingers. Tight. We're not going to put the wrench on it until we know we got like a bunch of turns on the threads and it's going in by itself. And uh, if it's not going in easy, just try moving that little screen a little bit. There it goes. It was just a little off and it wasn't threading. So it should like go mostly all the way in with your fingers, then put the wrench on it. It's real important not to cross thread any screws ever. Okay, 10 millimeter. Most of this thing is 10 millimeter. And just snug it up about as tight as it was when you took it off. Check that it's seated. Check that your oil fill plug is about as tight as it was when you took it off. Gonna wipe all of this down with a the red. Then we're gonna go around the back side and fill it up with the new synthetic, which this baby will live on from now on. So here we are on the back side. I took the big panel off with the six bolts. We're going to put the oil in 1.65 liters and we're going to use the measurements on the side. We're going to put one full liter and then the second one we're going to leave uh, 0.35 uh, milliliters in there and that'll give us our 1.65. Make sure your funnel's clean. If it's not clean, clean it, okay? It's important we don't contaminate. Now, uh, it still is a little of a tough angle. There's not much of a slope, but we do have a little bit, so we just can't go glunking this stuff in. we got to pour it in carefully. And we'll switch to another scene right now because I don't want to bore you guys. Now, a couple of tips for you. It's hard to overfill these engines because any extra would come out because you're supposed to fill it up right to the bottom of the notch. I measured using the containers one full uh, and then uh, 0.65 but then I added 0.5 because the American is sold in quarts and it's actually like 9.46 anyway I measured it out 1.65 liters. I cut the funnel off a little bit uh, because uh, it seemed to flow better. Uh, it was originally longer and a lot thinner. 
I also opened the oil fill plug on the other side to let the air out as this was filling up. So there's a couple of tips for you. And then we're going to wipe everything down. We're just going to double check our oil level. Fine. Uh, wipe everything down because we don't want this stuff getting dusty and mucky as the generator is getting used. And now I have the filler open on the other side. We're going to want to make sure we double check that that's closed. Now we just spray everything with the, uh, or at least wipe it down with the brake cleaner solvent because uh, we don't want like dust and dirt sticking to this thing. It's brand new. We want to keep it looking brand new. Now I'm going to spray and uh, I'm going to put a rag underneath and I'm going to spray that whole drip tray area with the brake cleaner solvent just to make sure that there's no residual oil laying around. And remember we had opened this side to help pour the oil in so we're going to want to make sure that that's cleaned up and closed up nice. Alrighty, so that was our first oil change, our eight-hour break-in oil change on the Aurora Silent Diesel. I hope uh, you guys learned something. Uh, I'm really impressed with this little machine. Uh, it's a little pricey, and um, but uh, but I'm impressed with it. And look, you get what you pay for, you know. So uh, we did the oil change. Now we're just gonna check, like for loose wires and loose battery terminals or anything out of order. We're going to button it back up. It's ready to go into service now. Break in, initial break in period over. The next service interval is 20 hours. And that's like a major, like, uh, retalking the head and, and uh, really checking everything. It's all in the manual. Um, but the, the initial 8 hour and the switch to synthetic oil is done. Uh, now I can safely, like, just fill up the fuel tank to avoid any possible condensation issues. And, and store it until ready to use, maybe every three months uh, exercising it, you know, starting it up, bring it up to operating temperature under load, of course. And um, uh, basically that's it. So look, response videos on any of my stuff is more than welcome. I'll post them all. I don't care, all right? You don't like something, make a video. You don't like something I did, make a video. I'll put it as the RE. It doesn't matter to me. I'm all about freedom of speech, you know? and uh, post comments or whatever below. See you later.